What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna to be doing the full thousand round review of SIG's Mighty Spear. Now, the SIG Spear has a lot of uses, and it is one of the hottest guns on the market currently. And that's because the US military just adopted it as its new service rifle. Well, sort of. The SIG Spear is actually the civilian version, and it does have a lot of differences to the US military version, which we'll get into in this video. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of it as a civilian. We're gonna talk about what you could use it for, what they might use it for, and maybe what are the pros and cons between it, closest competitors, and what it's phasing out, the AR. So we're gonna go over a lot today and hopefully we'll answer all the questions that you guys might want before you pick one of these up. <laughs> oh yeah. So first off, what is the SIG Spear? Well, this guy right here is a 16 inch piston driven semi-automatic rifle that can either be a DMR, it can be a battle rifle, and you can actually use it for CQB as well. It's actually pretty cool because it has a piston system as opposed to something like an AR-10, so you can actually adjust it for suppressed, not suppressed, or adverse conditions, all that kind of thing. It is an MCX, it's just a very large one, so it does take the same uh, modular concept that the MCX does, and I think they do a great job with it. As you can see here, we've got SIG's flash hider, which I didn't use much during the review. We actually uh, used a couple of different things we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, I put a scout light on there because obviously you're gonna want a light on your rifle, so I wanted to test and feel how the rifle uh, felt while using the weapon light, and spoiler alert, it's pretty good. There's your gas piston system there. All it is takes is one quick turn, even if it's really fucking dirty, all you have to do is put a round in it and you can twist it over, no problem. Uh, same concept for the rail as the standard SIG MCX, making it very modular, very easy to change. And that's kind of nice about the barrel and caliber as well because these guns are available in several different calibers. Or they will be someday, but right now they're only available in 308. However, in the future they will be available in 6.5 and 277 Fury. Now that's the first switch between the civilian version and the military version is that this takes standard 308 currently and uh, the military ammunition that's a lot hotter and developed to penetrate level for body armor is not available currently to civilians. So you'll be shooting 308 through this, but that's not a problem because it's very cheap, readily available, and you can more than push this out to a thousand yards. This has the accuracy to do it as well. In the video, we pushed out to 500 with no problem with a one to eight scope. Yep. Nice. So going back, we have a flat top receiver. You can put any optic on there you want. We have a side charging handle and we have a T charging handle and then we have ambi controls on both sides. So left or right handed makes no difference at all. You have a bolt release, a magazine release and a safety on both sides. So very cool, very nice for my wife as well because she is a left handed person. We also have SIG's uh, pistol grip here but that is interchangeable with any AR. We have a folding buffer tube here. You can put any stock you want on it. It comes with the Magpul, although we were running the BCM on it because I'm a bigger guy. The Magpul's a little small for me. Uh, you can fold it. It doesn't need the, the buffer tube to work. There's no buffer assembly back there. Uh, it's just so you can put on any air stock that you want. And the color is absolutely amazing as well. Not to mention it's a fairly high performing rifle, but it's a very sexy rifle as well. As you can see here, as I mentioned in the first shots, it looks like Master P created this or something. It really does look like a very highlighted bronze mixed with FDE. It works good for camel, but it looks really good as well. Very similar to the SCAR here, which we're going to be sort of comparing throughout the video since it's kind of the most similar. This is actually my scar and it doesn't normally come with this rail but uh, you can see here that's already one advantage of the MCX that it comes with the rail you want right out of the box and it also doesn't take an arm and a leg and two surgeons to put the rail on like the scar does. So the MCX is certainly more modular than the scar and we'll get into more advantages here in a second. Now before we keep going we did partner with our friends at getentertowin.com for this rifle. They sent it over to us and we love working with Eric and his team because not only are they veteran owned, but they allow me to get really cool guns to review that I wouldn't be able to afford. This gun's MSRP is $4,000, but it's currently going for five to six or even $7,000. And the best news is, you can win this rifle. All you have to do is go to the description below and sign up. You'll be automatically entered to win this, and you also happen to win a gun that's thoroughly tested by me. Whether that's cool to you or not, it's up to you. It's super easy to enter. All you have to do is click the description, purchase a collectible gun mat, and you'll be already entered to win this 5K rifle. You're helping to support our independent reviews, as well as an amazing veteran-owned company. Today's the last day of the giveaway, so if you're seeing this video, it means you should go down there and click. If you're not interested, no big deal. Continue watching the review anyway. Now, why would you want this gun? 
First off, the Sig Spear is in the same philosophy of use as any other SR25, any other AR10, the FN SCAR, or even the M1A. Basically, you're looking for a larger caliber to go a little bit further or maybe hit harder up close. The 16 inch barrel is a nice mix for that because almost everything in every application for a civilian is gonna be zero to 500 yards, whether you're talking about hunting, home defense, self-defense, ranch defense. A 16 inch is not only portable and easy to use, but it has the caliber you need to get the job done. The nice thing about uh, 308, even though it kind of fell out of vogue, is that it's pretty much available in every gun store. I like to get gold medal match myself, and I like to use a Gila uh, for my target ammunition, and that's what we use for the majority of this review. We actually shot a thousand rounds for this. We had zero malfunctions, and that's pretty impressive considering we didn't clean it throughout the course of the review. We only put lube on it. I did lube it twice with Slip 2000 because ARs like lube. You know, sometimes use too much lube. Yeah, well, use, use too, too much, much lube. lube is always better than not enough. We had no problems, we had no gas issues or anything. We shot this suppressed and it shot extremely well also. Uh, we didn't need, we had to, we turned the gas one way for suppressed and we turned it the other way and that's the only time we used the gas system but it did work as advertised, it was great. Over the course of the review, we shot at CQB and we shot it far away. We shot it prone, kneeling, standing, supported on rest and we had no reliability issues whatsoever with any ammo or any magazine, which is pretty cool. They do take the SR25 magazines, so they are readily available. And I did have a good bit of these, so we could do reloads and things like that, which is nice. Although mine did only come with one magazine. I'm not exactly sure what yours will come with, but these are available pretty much every gun store as well. The accuracy portion of the video was also pretty excellent. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't a bolt gun in six millimeter arc or something like that, but it is accurate enough to certainly get the job done at long range. Not a lot of reviewers have been talking about this, but that is the awesome part about this gun is that you have good terminal ballistics well past three, 400 yards, which is very nice. So you theoretically could use this for hunting on larger game. Now we got good hits of 500 with this, just with the Aguila, which is very impressive. And then with gold metal match, we could put it on target pretty much every time. We were using a Collis uh, Kales, however you wanna say it, one to eight power scope, and it did handle the recoil and everything just fine. Unlike the SCAR, the MCX is not exactly known for an optic killer, so you can put uh, kind of sort of whatever optic you want on here. We ran the EOTech and we ran the Collis and we had no problems. EOTech was nice for close range because other than the accuracy portion, which, you know, six inch plate accuracy at 100 yards, no problem. Headshot accuracy at 100 yards, no problem. A man sized target at 500, no problem. But how does it deal with up close? Because that's kind of the issue as far as like a battle rifle or infantry style rifle goes, is that not only do you want to stretch it out, but you want to use it up close as well. And in that case, it is slower than a 5.56. It's slower than a 300 blackout, but it hits harder as well. And if you're a big guy like me, you can control it relatively well. We were transitioning targets up close with no problem. We did do build drills with it in sub two seconds. But it's kind of like riding the lightning. <laughs> You're gonna have to hold on to it, you know? It's the same problem that they kind of ran in with the M14 and then they went to an intermediate cartridge. It's because with a larger cartridge, you're not gonna be able to carry as much ammunition for the weight. You're not gonna have as large a magazine because the 20 round mags are gonna be the same size as larger 5.56 mags. Also, you're gonna have more recoil for a smaller statute shooter. And the real problem, in my personal opinion, with CQB is gonna be, it's heavy. It's 13 pounds as configured with a loaded mag and with the variable optic, we had it at 13 pounds. Now you gotta know that going in. About the same weight as a SCAR, and uh, it's gonna be more manageable than older battle rifles, but it is still a battle rifle. So if you're looking to just do home defense in your apartment, this is probably not the setup for you. <laughs> I'd consider to go through 14 walls. Could I use this for home defense? Hell yeah, I could, because I live out in the middle of nowhere, and we're shooting at four-legged creatures as much as we're shooting at two, because we live on a ranch, so keep that in mind. That is a large part of my philosophy of use, which is why I do keep a 7.62. I actually do use my SCAR. And uh, would I rather have this? Short answer is yes, I would. The ergonomics on this are better. You don't need to upgrade this out of the box like you do the SCAR. The trigger's better, the rail is better. And in my opinion, the accuracy, at least out of the box, the user available accuracy is gonna be better on this. You're able to put an AR stock and, and controls and stuff on this that you're not able to do with the SCAR or the EBR. My buddy Nick on PewView is gonna have a video on this. Uh, so feel free to check his channel out. But short answer is we did compare the EBR, this and the SCAR, considering they're kind of the three lineages of battle rifles and this was by far superior. Easier to shoot, more reliable, looks cooler. However, it is more expensive, but you don't have to worry about that 
if you enter the giveaway. I preferred it in the battle rifle configuration with a bipod and with a one to eight power scope, you can engage close targets if you need to, but it's mostly fun one, 200 yards and beyond in my personal opinion. And I think that's probably the best use for this. Now, even if 6.5 Creedmoor and 270 Fury were currently available, which they will be in the future, I would probably still take 308 just simply because of the availability and price of ammo. I like to shoot, so the lower the price of ammo, generally the better. And the second cool thing is with the modularity of the MCX, they're actually pretty easy to put in. It's not a, a pain in the ass like the Scar or some other guns. You can actually switch out the barrels and stuff actually pretty quickly here. It's just two Allen key screws here that you ratchet out and you can take the rail off and the barrel off and everything. Very cool system and I'm pretty, uh, pretty Pretty happy with it. They did a good uh, mix of reliability and shootability with this gun. You add the ergonomics, the AR controls, and the pretty lightweight as far as a 308 goes. Now it's 13 pounds configured, but it's nine pounds empty, which is actually pretty light for a 308. You get a pretty manageable system that can do the zero to thousand yards, and very few systems can actually do that, whereas now they can. And if you wanted to go to those more expensive calibers, you could have a 308 barrel, and then you could later buy the 6.5, and you could put that in there when you wanted to go long range. You could have a 16 inch and maybe a 20 inch 6.5 uh, Creedmoor, or something like that. To add to the, the accuracy portion of the video, we do have a pretty phenomenal trigger, and that's another reason where it beats the SCAR and the EBR, in my opinion, is the trigger is pretty close to a matched AR trigger, and you could actually put a Geisley in here too if you wanted to, which is very, very nice. Let's talk about the side charging handle. I liked it. Now, this system does have two charging handles. We have a T handle here, and then we have a side charger here. Now the T-handle, as you can see right there, is kind of an afterthought in my personal opinion, and it actually does get stuck on the stock if you try to use it, and I haven't seen anybody else talk about that in their review. So for the vast majority of the shooting, I did use the side charge drill, and I don't know anybody who picked this gun up that didn't start using the side charging handle, because not only is the T-handle not that well designed, but the side charging handle is absolutely excellent. Uh, not only does it come back really nice, but you can lock it open like that as well, and it's actually pretty comfortable to touch on your hand. Now, one thing I would mention is that the bolt is locked all the way to the rear, and you do decide to use the ping pong paddle on the left side. This thing can't clip your thumb a little bit, so be aware of that. Uh, maybe wear gloves if you want to, and that'll uh, help with the heat as well. Now, we didn't see any heating issues with the MCX because it does have a very large and thick barrel, and it does have a very large and thick rail as well. When you pick this thing up, you can tell it's a lot more beefy than a 5.56, so be aware of that. Uh, uh, it may not be the best thing for smaller stature shooters. That easy to shoot? No, it's not. <laughs> I didn't think so. Simply because of the forward weight and the large rail. That being said, the forward weight does help mitigate a lot of the recoil as well. It keeps that muzzle flat and I did like that. We have QD points on each side here and down here by the pistol grip. I generally run them on my stock, but I do like this here. And if you want extra QD mounts, you can stick them on the M-Lock rail anywhere you want. Another big advantage to the SCAR or the M1A is that you can put accessories all the way around the gun and you have enough space to come up and grip the gun tighter so you can shoot it more accurately. You don't have to spend extra money and time putting a different rail on because SIG did it right, right out of the box. Now in summary, if you're looking to get a battle rifle, I do believe this is the best one on the market. If you're looking for a 308, I think this is a really good way to go. Now make no mistake, does it replace 5.56? Does it replace your blackout? No, it doesn't. It just doesn't. If you're looking for a standard home defense gun, I think a 5.56 is still the best way to go. However, if you already have one of those, or if you're looking for something a bit bigger, or if you're looking to stretch out, or maybe take large game, or you're just looking for those one shot stops, this is probably where I'd head if money was no object. I think this is better out of the box than all of its other competitors, including the EBR M1A, including the SCAR, including a lot of the 7.62 rifles. Uh, the new Ruger looks fascinating. However, I think the MCX carries with it that military testing, that super reliability. It comes with all the features that you want. The cool factor of it not only being new and being in the military, but it's also going to be in tons of video games and movies going forward, and more parts and everything are going to be more readily available the more these trickle out into the mainstream. So it's going to be like the Beretta, or it's going to be like the Colt at some point in its life and eventually these are going to be the gun to have. That being said, do you get it on the ground floor? 
Man, it's expensive right now, and if I was gonna get this, I would enter that giveaway just because it's a little more expensive right now than I think it needs to be, and I think personally for me, I'm gonna wait to pick one of these up, but I do appreciate GetEnterToWin.com sending me this over for review. And we did wanna do a big congratulations to the previous winners, and if you win this gun, make sure to send me a message and let me know what you think about it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. this way. Oh my god. <sighs>